welcome here to NorCal Sports TV Weekly Recap Show. Dustin Padgett here with Levi Flores. We hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving Day weekend. We have a lot of sports on the agenda to get to on this one. Yeah, we're starting off with two tournaments and two college basketball games. We'll get to those later. But first, the NorCal Tip-Off High School Basketball Tournament. Yes, this one was in Newark, California, and it was an exciting one. I didn't get the chance to attend this one. I was at the other tournament, but I heard that we had quite a bit of good games. And we're going to get a chance to show you guys right now our first game of the agenda, St. Patrick, St. Vincent versus Moreau Catholic. Let's roll the highlights. This was the first game of the tournament here, so these two teams are looking to show up and show out opening game of their season as well. And with seven games behind them, you know, this is with the fans in the crowd, this is a very important game. Opening tip here, and we get a dunk just like that, and he raises the roof for Moreau Catholic. Takes the early lead back on the other end. Three ball, corner pocket. St. Patrick, St. Vincent's takes the 3-2 lead early. Moving on later to the first quarter. Five and a half minutes. It's a 7-6 game. And we get a nice finish at the hoop. A little layup there. 11-10 game here later on in the first quarter. It's a close game at this point, Levi, but it wouldn't last too long. Moreau Catholic actually hits a three there to take the lead. We're still in the first quarter. It's still a two-point game. We get a, a nice finish at the other end here for St. Patrick, St. Vincent's. They're up by one point here just late in the first quarter, and we get a three ball, top of the key, 23-19 to 19 late first quarter. And this was really Levi the last chance that Morel Catholic had. It really started um, spreading as this game progressed. Second quarter, as you see, it's a 12-point game, and we get an alley-oop, yes, sir, with the dunk to give him a 14-point lead late in the first half. Now just about a minute left. We get a three ball, top of the key, wide open, nails it. That's great ball movement there. Now, we're moving on to the third quarter. It's a 15-point game, and things just start getting out of hand here from Moreau Catholic, a three ball there. Now it's a 19-point game late third quarter, and that was not done yet. Another three ball there puts it a 22-point lead going into the fourth quarter, and it really just gets a little bit more out of hand from here. A lot more highlights for the St. Patrick St. Vincent boys. There's a finish at the hoop there to give them a 22-point lead. We'll see that one again. Yes, sir! with the dunk, the tomahawk. And then we get another finish at the hoop here on a nice drive of the very next play. And as you see, they're still pumped up and they're still energetic about this game, even though they've got a 25 point lead. An alley-oop and a finish at the hoop. All of a sudden now it's a 30 point game, which was a two point game in the first quarter, has spread to a 30 point game in the fourth. We get a steal, a nice breakaway, a good pass, and then the windmill. Okay, we've seen a lot of good dunks here from these boys. 93 to 58 final, Levi. What do we got to say about that one? It was an amazing game by St. Patrick, St. Vincent. Good effort by Moreau Catholic. Two great players for St. Patrick. Junior wing, Jaden Alexander, and senior guard, Jalen Scott, number four, as we saw a bunch of plays from him dunking it and all those different things. Scott ended with six three-pointers, 26 points. Alexander, who finished with 26 points as well on some of those spectacular dunks. And you got to love to see when those guards can get up and dunk the ball like that. He's not a very tall man, um, and he was able to get up there with, with force and put that ball in. We saw multiple good dunks for them. This is early going in the season, so if you're a Moreau Catholic, nothing to hold your head down about. However, you know, you got a lot of work to do in practice this upcoming week because that was a rough go of it. They don't want to lose games by 35 points, which they did here in this one. Final score, 93-58, to St. Patrick, St. Vincent's. Good start to their season. Move on to our next game of the agenda for this tournament, game number two, Bishop O'Dowd versus Modesto Christian. This one here was slated to be a good one as well. Modesto is a, a local team, as we all know. We've done a lot of their football games this year. That's something that we're used to. Bishop O'Dowd, um, nationally known. They're not just a, a California-known team, but they're a nationally-known team. Yeah, Bishop O'Dowd, this is their first regulation game for them this season, so hopefully they do pretty well. Hey, well, well let's check out the highlights. Bishop O'Dowd, Modesto Christian. Modesto coming in as the home team, but again, we're playing in a, a neutral area here at a neutral tournament, so nobody really technically the home team. You see everybody pumped up. This is game two. Now we have more fans in the stands. As the day goes on, more people are coming. Early first quarter, about halfway mark, 6-4 lead for Modesto Christian. We get a nice little floater in the lane. Give them a four-point lead here in the early going. Now all of a sudden, it's a 17-15 game. Bishop O'Dowd in the lead. We get a drive to the hoop. Nice finish there. Good ball control while he was in the air to get it around the defender for an easy layup. Puts him up by four. Now they're up by seven, and they get a fadeaway from the top of the key. That'll be a two-pointer. And Bishop O'Dowd take a nine-point lead. But now we move to the third quarter. Modesto Christian has finally rallied. It's a two-point game, but all of a sudden, a three-ball. Bishop O'Dowd, 30-25. Very low-scoring game. We're in the 
Middle of the third quarter, still 32-25. A nice finish at the hoop again. Bishop O'Dowd on a nice run. But here we go from Modesto Christian. Late third. Oh, what a pass behind the back. Great ball movement there for the easy finish at the hoop. It's a three-point three game all of a sudden. Now they're down by six, but another three-ball corner pocket. Late third quarter. Modesto Christian staying right in this one. Down by three. Late third quarter. And here we have another three-pointer from them, and it gets all parts of that rim, falls in. It's a three-point game going into the fourth quarter, seemingly a very close game. Now we have a, a steal and a breakaway. Now it's a one-point game and one, 15 seconds going into the fourth quarter. Everything looking okay for Modesto Christian moving forward, but we see uh, the end of the third quarter here, we get a little tip up in off a missed three-pointer, and they're going to count that. And they, Bishop O'Dell, what they did is they took that momentum into the fourth quarter and let it fly because they really took over shop here in this fourth quarter. Just up by two with six minutes, they get a finish at the hoop. Again, now it's a four-point lead. You got Modesto Christian coming back, and he gets swatted. Rejection, and off the rejection, they go into the fast break. They kick it back. They hit the three from the top of the key. That is a five-point swing. All of a sudden, it's a seven-point game. And, folks, the Bishop O'Dowd boys would not be slowing down anytime soon. We still have six minutes left to go. It's still a close game, but we get a nice finish at the hoop with the spin move. Puts on the spin cycle there, and all of a sudden, 65-49 to 49 final. So, Levi, what was a close game the whole way through from first quarter to the middle of the fourth quarter turns into a 16-point win for Bishop O'Dowd. Great game, both teams. They just kind of let loose in the end there, and one team did really great, one team didn't do so well, but they both played really super well. Six foot eight, first year player, Alex Mercvilletes for Bishop O'Dowd, 17 points, 14 rebounds, four blocks. What a stat line for a high school player. Oh yeah, 14 boards. I mean, he's obviously dominating the paint down there. And we saw him finishing at the hoop a couple of times as well. And again, in the fourth quarter, they went on a 15-point run because at one point this was just a, a one-point game going into the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, Bishop O'Dowd let loose. But as you mentioned, both teams played well. Modesto Christian kept this a close game. It was a fairly low-scoring game. But overall, early going in the season, Bishop O'Dowd is going to be – and they were the traveling team as well. Modesto is kind of a local-ish to the Newark area. Bishop O'Dowd a little bit further away. They're going to be going home with the victory. Modesto going to be looking to rebuild in their next one. But, again, played a decent game. Just come out behind in this one. 65-49 49 the final game number three on the agenda this was one of the most exciting games of the tournament and i'm not surprised there's two reasons for that newark was playing and they were the host team in this tournament you know you're the host team you're actually getting the only home game of anybody in the tournament you expect to come out and playing well they're playing grant and i happen to know very well about grant that's a sacramento team from my area and grant is a great program i mean they're they're well renowned for their football but basketball wise they're no slouch they've always been playing good basketball in the past few years especially the really program has been built Building. Let's get to the highlights on this one and see if we have a good one. The Grant Pacers here traveling from the sack area playing the Newark Memorial boys. As I said, the host of this tournament. And we go to the second quarter. It's a 19-12 Grant with the lead. So the home team down a bit. We get a nice drive to finish at the hoop there, make it a five-point game. Move further into the second quarter. It's 21-16 Grant still hanging on with the lead. Fairly low scoring game. We get a three ball right here on the left wing. Nice shot for Grant. Give him an eight point lead at the time. Now we move later in the second quarter. It's a five point game and we get a nice drive to the lane here from the guard. Was able to get by the defender, finish at the hoop. Now Grant's up by nine late in the second quarter. We get a three ball from the top of the key with a little bit of contact there. And Grant with the 12 point lead moving to the third quarter. Grant's up by 13 and the homeboys, Newark Memorial, Really struggling at this point, but they finally start to wake it up for the rest of this game. The last quarter and a half, they really put their mark on. We saw a three-pointer there to cut it back to nine. Now they're down by eight late third. Three ball, corner pocket, good. Five-point game, 38 to 33, and they're battling right back in it. And then we get a steal right here off the inbounds pass and a nice finish at the hoop. After a missed shot, that's what happens when your teammate follows the shot. They had three guys there. No Grant players were there. Weren't able to get up the court. Now we have a three-point game. And just like that, a finish at the hoop. And Grant's 12-point lead is gone. All of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Now we're in the fourth quarter. Three ball, Newark Memorial. And they have their first lead of the game early fourth quarter, 43-42. to 42. Will the Pacers have a response? Well, yes, sir, they will. Look at that step-back three-pointer. That was a very pretty shot. We move for further in the fourth quarter here. It's a two-point Grant lead and a great steal off the inbounds pass and a wild finish at the hoop and one. Ties the game up at 45, but we move later in the fourth quarter and all of a sudden Grant's up by three with a minute and a half left. Great finish at the hoop. Great cut there. 
for Newark to cut it to a one-point game. Grant's got the ball, about a minute left, up by one, 53 to 52. What are they going to do? They throw up a three. Yes, sir! Three ball, puts him up by four, and that was probably the shot of the game, I'd say, as you see the final shot there. Newark had a chance to tie it at the buzzer, unable to get it. Final score, 58 to 55, Grant. Yeah, the Cougars were tra trailing, excuse me, 38 to 22 at halftime, finally came back, nearly made it back, just a few points off, and the Pacers took the lead. Yeah, the Pacers were able to take the lead in the fourth quarter and able to hold on to it there, 58-55. to 55. And again, Grant Pacers coming from the Sacramento area, area played a great game. They will love to take this win. The Newark boys, as mentioned, they started off really slow. this early part of their season, but they put on a show for the crowd because when you're down by 16 points and, and you're in the home tournament and you're able to come back and take the lead, even though they didn't get a win, this is a non-league game, non-conference game, winning isn't always the most important thing especially in the early part of the season you know cohesiveness having your your guys playing well together and playing a good basketball game you know from top to bottom and that's what Newark did they didn't play bad they just kind of started off sluggishly offensively made a great comeback but Grant great job for the Pacers coming out on top 58 to 55 next game on the agenda another really good matchup I was looking forward to watching this one Reardon versus Jay Sarah couple of local Bay Area teams coming to play this tournament. This should have been a good one. Let's get to the highlights on here. We got Jay Sarah coming in technically as the home team, but again, both of these teams traveling for this tournament. Opening tip off here, as you see Reardon now with four minute mark in the first quarter, up nine to five, and we get a nice dunk. Oh my, Jay Sarah, look at that. Pulls that one back behind his head with the, with the force. 11-8, Reardon lead here, and they get a three ball with a three-minute mark in the fourth first quarter. Reardon doing a pretty good job here in the early going, up by six. Now we move to the second quarter. We're all knotted at 23. Jay Sarah with the ball, and yes, sir, another three-pointer. Now they're up by three later in the first half. Jay Sarah's now got a three-point lead with the ball. Drive and finish at the hoop, up by five, 30-25, to 25, late first half. Now we move to the third quarter, and Jay Sarah still hanging around at the lead by three, but a three ball from Reardon at the top of the key. And just like that, we're knotted at 34 in the early stages of the third quarter. Now it's a Jay Sarah right back with the lead, 36 to 34. But as this game would progress, Reardon would not say die. And they continued to battle this one out. Nice shot there to tie it up in the middle of the third quarter. Now Reardon's got the lead at the four minute mark of the third. But Jay Sarah says not just yet. A three ball from the corner. Now they're up by one. Late third quarter, one-point lead for Jay Sarah. Reardon hits a long three-pointer. How about that with a hand in his face and about 10 feet back from the arc? Not a problem. Now Reardon in the fourth quarter is up by four, but Jay Sarah trying to get the drive and they get blocked. What a rejection there. See you later. And on the other end, an easy layup, and all of a sudden what Jay Sarah's lead was through the second and third quarter is gone. Reardon up by four, now Reardon up by six with a steal and a dunk. Four minutes left to go. Reardon up by eight. Will the Jay Sierra boys have enough oomph to come back in it? They're down by six with under a minute, and we get some great full court press beat here by Reardon. But then a block at the other end from Jay Sierra. What a block. They actually call a foul on it, though. Two free throws are going to go in for Reardon, put them up by eight. And we're going to get a three ball here. Nice shot. Jay Sierra says, well, we got one last effort here under a minute but unfortunately being down by a few possessions with not much time they get another three-pointer here with 15 seconds to cut it to three but then a foul and a couple of made free throws Reardon's gonna hang on and you see that young man celebrating out there it's hard to tell if he was celebrating or if he was limping or not but <laughs> either way they come out with the five-point win a great battle here from Reardon. Reardon ranked 14 Jay Sarah ranked number 17 Great game overall. A lot of three-pointers. I think they were actually downtown shooting from there instead of the actual court, but <laughs> it was a great game overall. Reared in 64, J. Sarah 59. Yeah, Reared in came out on top. Uh, good battle back, especially a strong fourth quarter there for them to get the final win, 64-59. to 59. Our fifth game of the agenda, Windward versus Clovis West. This one should also be a good matchup. Clovis West, uh, they brought two teams out to this tournament. Clovis West and Clovis East played in the Consumnes River Tournament that we're going to be talking about a little bit. But again, a team that travels with two teams like that, you know that they're going to be out and ready to play some good basketball. Let's get to the highlights on this one. Windward and Clovis West, we got Windward listed here as the home team, if you will. But again, neither of these teams technically the home team. 0-0, nice crowd base out there. Move to the second quarter, it's a seven-point lead for Clovis West, and we get a nice finish at the hoop here. 20-13 at that time. Now it's 22-15. to 15. 
Clovis West up by seven. Three ball, top of the key. Not a problem. Ten point lead here for Clovis West in the second quarter. Now they're up by 13 right before the half. And a three ball there for Windward, cutting it to a ten point game at the half. That three was actually huge. That momentum carrying them into the locker room carried into the third quarter as we see a nice shot there from Clovis West to put them back up by 10. But as you see now, it's a four-point game and a finish at the hoop from Windward. All of a sudden, we have a two-point game. The lead for Clovis West is gone. Now let's see if the Windward boys can come back in full circle and take the lead. And they do. Three ball, corner pocket, and the Windward boys right there in the midst of an 11-0 run, now a 13-0 run, finish at the hoop, 15-0 run, and all of a sudden Clovis West, who was up by 10 just at the six minute mark of the third quarter, is now down by five. And the run is not over, three ball right there, and all of a sudden Windward boys go on a 17-0 run, and unfortunately Clovis West, they get a nice finish, break away and dunk there, but Clovis West being down by five at this point, not able to really oomph what they needed to finish this one off. Nice three-pointer there from Windward, back up by six. Late stages of the game, this was a dagger here. Nine-point lead, Windward drains the three with about four minutes left. Clovis West trying to hang on, trying to get back in it. Nice, nice little shot there, nice touch, making it a five-point game. But that might be the closest they'll get. We're down to the two-minute mark. And Clovis West says, wait a minute, we're not done just yet. Three ball, two-point game, back-to-back -back shots there. And now it's a one-point game with a minute and a half, and we get an offensive board there. And what a job at the hoop in the post and one with the harm. That there was a dagger. Clovis West had cut that six-point lead back to one. Now all of a sudden it's a four-point game. Three-ball corner pocket. Good! One-point game with just 20 seconds left to go. Winward comes out on top 67-62. to 62. This was a super exciting game, probably the most exciting game of the agenda here, Levi. Yeah, game of runs. The whole game, it was just runs by both teams, Winward and Clovis West. Devin Tillis, who's the number 52 ranked on Cal High Sports Hot 100, ended with 21 points, 11 rebounds, and Dylan Andrews led Winward with 25 points. Yeah, we saw Tillis at the end of the game, hit a couple of shots to get them right back in it, made it a one-point game late, but Andrews, what a catalyst here for his team. that They were down by 10 at halftime and come out in the third quarter with a huge 17-0 run, never looked back from there. Both teams played good games early start to the season. I think both coaches will be happy with it. I mean, Clovis West probably wished that they played a little bit better in that third quarter. But other than that, Windward, you know, they were down big early and came back. Give them all the credit in the world. We've got a lot more coming up on our plate here, but we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on NorCal Sports TV Weekly Recap Show. Welcome back here. We got a couple more um, games of this tournament left to go, and then a couple of JUCO games left on the agenda. The next game of this tournament was Midi versus Camp Alindo. A couple of local Bay Area teams close close to Newark area expected this one to be a really good matchup, and they didn't let us down. Let's get to the tape. Highlights here from Midi and Camp Alindo. Camp Alindo will be coming in technically as the home team. Opening tip off here. We got eight minute quarters in the high school basketball realm. It's an 8-2 lead here in the early going for Mitty. And we're going to get a three ball, a corner pocket. Yes, sir. Nice touch on that. Nine point lead in the early going for Mitty. But Campolindo says, well, wait a minute. You know, we're here to play too. They get a nice three pointer later in the first quarter. It's a five point Mitty lead and a great drive and finish at the hoop for Campolindo. Cuts it to three. But all of a sudden, now Mitty back up by nine. And a good shot there with a hand in his face. Midi up by 11, move it to the second quarter. Midi eight point lead with the ball. Nice finish there at the hoop. Uses the glass. Glass is your friend, as they say. Three pointer, top of the key, and Campolindo cuts it back to three as we move here, middle of the second quarter. Now it's an eight point game all of a sudden, and a fade away. Wow, nice fade there. Cuts it to a six point game now. Midi's up by five, and they get the three pointer. The friendly bounce off the front of the rim, back to an eight point Midi lead. Now, right before the half, Midi's going to. Get another finish at the hoop, a layup, a six-point mini lead at halftime, playing the way that they want to. But all of a sudden, the third quarter comes about, and we get a 9-0 run from Campolindo to start it from down six to up three. But we move a little bit further on in the third, and now Mitty really taking control. Mitty gets a nice finish at the hoop to go up by five. Campolindo trying to hang around here, down by three late third quarter. Hits a nice shot. 
good touch on that one. We'll move to the fourth. Mitty's trying to really run away with this one. Nice shot from the wing there. Makes it an eight-point game with 6.15 left to go. Will Campolindo have anything left in him? Well, as you see here, yes, they will. Three ball, corner pocket, one-point game. But now we see under two minutes, Mitty looking for the finishing blow. They get a nice finish at the hoop. Good cut, good pass. Makes it a nine-point game. Now Mitty's up by five with just a minute left. They get the steal on the finish at the hoop. Seven-point game with a minute left. Game's over, right? Well, maybe not. It's a four-point game with 30 seconds, and we see a turnover there from Mitty. Then we get Mitty draining a three with 10 seconds on the clock. And then now all of a sudden it's a two-point game, and Mitty's going to run out the clock. So with 10 seconds left, they hit the three to go up by five. Hang on to win by two. What an exciting game we had here. Yeah, down to the final minute, both teams played a great game. Midi ranked number 24 and Campolino ranked number 21, so it was a close game in general and in stats. Brown led Midi with 20 points while Ryan added 8 points. And Aiden Mahani finished with 23 points for Campolino on 7 for 23 from the field. Yeah, he had a little bit of a rough shooting game, and honestly, Mitty was in the lead the whole way through. So if you look at the final score, you'd be like, hey, this is a really close game, 60-58, to 58, closest game we had final score-wise on the agenda. However, Mitty was in the lead from start to finish. Campolindo had a couple of leads by a point here and there, but for the most part, Mitty dominated this game. They controlled the time of possession. They did a very good job in this game. Mitty, you know, as, as assumed, was going to be a good team this year. They're going to come out, and they showed in their opening game that they can get the job done. Campolindo battled the whole way through, two-point game. Good battle for them. Looking, look for them to move on forward with their season. Um, you know, shake this one off, not a problem. Our final game of the agenda for this Newark Memorial Tournament, Dublin versus Weston Ranch. This should be a good one. Let's go to the highlights. Weston Ranch coming in as the, the home team, if you will. The Cougars versus the Gales. A lot of fans still in the stands. They stayed out for this whole tournament. Going to be here for this final one. Like I said, seven games on the agenda. This was an all-day basketball affair. Opening tip won by Weston Ranch, and they go down immediately and take the opening lead of this game 2-0. to zero. Those leads here for Weston Ranch, unfortunately, would be short-lived. 4-3, to three, they're down. They're up by one here, but now they're down 5-4. to four. Moved to the later stage of the first quarter, only 13 points overall. So a really low-scoring game at this, this point in time. But Dublin, three ball, put them up by five. Weston Ranch is going to get a nice finish at the hoop. Still a three-point game with two minutes in the first quarter, so very close. But now we move to the second quarter. All of a sudden, it's an eight-point game. We get a great cut, great pass, easy layup. Now it's a 10-point game, and Weston Ranch boys falling behind by double digits, and we move to the third quarter. They're still down by 15 points. We get a nice little step of fake. Yes, sir. Three ball. Splash. 14-point lead. Four and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter, and we get a three ball from about the same spot. Nothing but the bottom. 17-point lead for Dublin. Weston, now it's an 18-point game for Weston Ranch. They're Trying to make a little bit of an effort to get back into this one. Down by 18, they get a finish at the hoop. Cut it to 16. Now they're still down by 16. We get a nice little fast break here. Good drive, good finish at the hoop. It's a 14-point game. And one. In the next play here, we're going to see another nice drive from Weston Ranch. A good finish at the hoop. Another and one. With the free throw, they cut it down to 11. So they went from down 18 to down 11. Went on a 9-2 run. But that, unfortunately, was the closest that they would get. Remainder of this game, a three-pointer here. A meaningless one. Five-minute mark. Cutting it to 15 points. But Dublin, just too much offense. We see they match that, that three-pointer right on the other end. Very next possession to go back up by 18, and they end up coasting there. Going to end up coming out 76 to 52 as the in their final. We get one more shot, another three ball, lots of three pointers we saw here from Dublin here in this one, and they're going to come out on top, 76 to 52. As I said, not not necessarily our most exciting game of the agenda, but hey, it was the final one of the evening. Yeah, Anthony Roy for Dublin. Number 47 in Cal High Sports Hot 100. He ended with 26 points and hit all five of his three-point shots. Yeah, as we saw him draining those threes in the third quarter there, they had a really good job to Dublin. And Weston, you know, rough start to the season. But, again, this is the opening tournament of your season. You haven't had any other games yet, so they've got plenty of time to pick it up. You know, 
get to the practice board, you know, work things out because this opening one was all Dublin. Well, that will wrap up the tournament here, and that was the NorCal tip-off. This is our first time out there. We hope you guys enjoyed that tournament at home. Like I said, we had seven games going on simultaneously there, and then we had some games going on in a different tournament. So this past Saturday was a super busy day for us. We've got a couple of JUCO games on our agenda next. Columbia versus Folsom Lake. This one here, Columbia comes in at 7-0 on the season. They're a super powerful team. And Folsom Lake, 2-7 on the season. This one here, based on the numbers, seemingly a little bit one-sided. They had played once earlier this year. 94-81 was the final for Columbia. Let's check the highlights. Folsom Lake coming in on the road. And we're out of tournament play, so we actually have a true home game here. Columbia in the first half, up by just two points, 4-2. to two. Slow start here, four minutes in. Nice shot at the wing. Now it's an 8-6 to six Folsom Lake lead, and we get a three ball. And just like that, it's getting a much closer game. We're still staying pretty close here for Folsom. Folsom Lake actually takes the lead there. Now they're down by two, 11-9. Columbia gets a nice three-pointer, give them a one-point lead. So halfway through the first half, this is a very even affair. And based on the numbers going into this game, Folsom Lake wasn't really expected to have too good of a game. Two, down by two here, Columbia drains a three. Now it's a five-point game, and they're trying to stretch out this lead a little bit. Three-point game, we get another three-pointer right there, nailed it. Six-point lead for Columbia, 6.25 left to go in the half, and this looks like the same play almost, same spot. Another three ball, and another three ball from about the same location. So three plays in a row, three, three, and three. So what was a two-point game? All of a sudden, it's a 12-point game, and this run is not done yet. Another three-pointer, and what, what this was a 19-17 game. They go on a 16-0 run there in Columbia, never really looking back. Nice dunk at the hoop there. Nearing the end of the first half, they're up by 18. It's 40-22. to Three ball. Yes, sir. And Columbia really lighting it up from downtown in this first half. That's a 6-3 that we've seen just on this highlight reel alone. Now it's a 23-point game in the second half, and Folsom Lake really... Not sticking with him very well on this one, 56 to 34. It's a three ball corner pocket. We've seen a lot of threes from the Columbia boys. Get a play here from Folsom Lake. Ooh, okay, not a problem there. The fake behind the back pass and the finish at the hoop. So Folsom Lake showing they can have some exciting plays here, but a three ball, a deep one. That one was about five, 10 feet behind the arc. We get another three ball here and Columbia just pouring it on with the threes, scoring the majority of their points here in this one via the three. Good drive and good dish and good finish at the hoop there for Folsom Lake. This point of the game is 69 to 45, 24 point lead. We move later in the half, still a 24 point lead. And we get a three ball from the corner pocket. Yes, sir. And Columbia comes out on top 87 to 65, 22 point game. After the first 10 minutes of this one, it wasn't close. I was at this game in Columbia College. Grayson Carper, Landis Spivey, two great three-point shooters. They connected from deep almost every single time. Landis Spivey ended up being our NCS TV Summer Camp Player of the Game. 22 points, eight rebounds, two steals. While Grayson Carper had 23 points, four rebounds, and three steals. It was a great game. Even Caden Sparks Davis, who is local here in Sonora, got to play, and he made that three-pointer from the corner, as you saw in the video. Yeah, definitely. You could tell with the way that the team was cheering that three at the end of the game. I knew it was a bench player because you could just tell with the, how excited they were. It was a 25-point game. I mean, they got super amped up when that young man hit the three-pointer, so it's good to hear that little tidbit. Our last game of this um, JUCO uh, little section is going to be West Hills Coalinga coming in at 0-9 versus Lassen at 2-6. and Levi, this matchup here wasn't um, you know the best of matchups, but... If you're West Hills Coalinga, you're trying to get your first win of the season. And Lassen, you just want to keep uh, trying to improve the record 2-6, and six, but they've won one of their last two games, so they're playing a little bit better at this point in time. Let's get to the highlights. Home team here, West Hills. The 0-9 West Hills boys looking to get their first win of the season. They're down 5-2 here, a couple of minutes into the game. Get a nice little drive and finish. Step through, gets by a couple of guys. Lassen takes the lead by five there. Now they're up by seven and a nice little fadeaway. Give them a nine point lead. Halfway through the opening half, 17 to 10 game. Three ball from Lassen. Yes, sir. 20 to 10 lead. Now West Hills Coalinga down by nine. Seven and a half minutes left to go. 
You get an open look for the three, and they drain it. So it's a six-point game here later in the first half. Now it's a 12-point game. Lassen drains the three. Opening second half, they were up by 12. Now they're up by 15. If you're West Hills Coalinga, another rough one here. Three ball, corner pocket. Yes, sir. And Lassen all of a sudden up by 16 on the road. Now they're up by 18. Three ball from West Hills Coalinga. Puts that one in. It's a 15-point game. West Hills Coalinga behind the back. Yes, sir. Not a problem there. 13-point game. Trying to make a little bit of a run, get this one a little bit closer, and they were able to do that. Nice layup there. Good ball skill. Makes it a 13-point game. Now it's an 11-point game, and all of a sudden the Coalinga boys are on a 9-2 run. Now they're just down by 9. They get the steal on the layup. So Lassen falling apart a little bit. Are they going to be able to hold on down the final 10 minutes? 7-point game. West Hills Coalinga finish at the hoop, and it goes. Now it's a five-point game with 8.25 left to go. West Hills Coalinga looking to cut it further, and they do. A layup, a three-point game. Are they going to come back for the first win of the season? Now it's a tie game at 58. So they've made the full comeback from down 19 to tie the game up. But Lassen, as you see, gets a layup there. Now they're up by four. Six and a half minutes left to go. West Hills Coalinga says we're not done yet. A three-pointer from the corner. One-point game. 6.20 left to go. 62 to 61, and we get a shot at the right inside the free throw line. And West Hills Coalinga has their first lead of the game, 63 to 62, but it would be short lived. Down the stretch, Lassen does everything that they need to do. In the past four and a half minutes, they only give up two points. It was a 63 to 62 lead, and the final score is 60, 75 to 67. So over the last four and a half minutes there, West Hills Coalinga only scored four points, and Levi, that was a backbreaker for him. Yeah, it was a really tough game for him. Lassen, leading scorer, Ibrahim Shabiz, 22 points, two rebounds, two steals. On the other side, Coalinga, Trevon Perry, 19 points, three rebounds, three steals, and three assists. Great stat line. Oh, yeah, and uh, uh, Lassen, overall, they're going to move to 3-6, and six, West Hills, Coalinga, 0-10, oh, but you got to give the West Hills boys some credit in this one because they were down by 20 points in the early parts of the second half. The whole game really wasn't going the way they planned. Their season's not going the way that they planned. You saw in the stands there there were very few people, so they don't have anybody cheering them on. They have really nothing to play for right now other than their pride, and they showed up. They came all the way back and took the lead by one. Unfortunately, all the energy it took them to get that lead and to come back from down by 19 points was unable to have them have enough oomph down the stretch in the last four and a half minutes. Give Lassen credit for stemming the tide, staying with it, and getting the win there by eight points. Lassen going to move to three and six. That was the final JUCO game of the agenda. We did have another tournament on hand. This one was at Kasumas River College in the Elk Grove area, the opening day tip-off marathon. We had seven games there, so we had seven games simultaneously going on on two different courts. Super cool for NorCal Sports TV, not something that we're, we're necessarily used to doing, but hey, we had 14 games, and they were a lot of good ones. Uh, we had game number one, and this one was San Lorenzo, and they came out on top 69-57 to 57 over West Campus, a uh, local Sacramento team. Um, San Lorenzo was the traveling team. And then we have another local-ish uh, to Sacramento, uh, Rockland team, Whitney, coming out on top over Clayton Valley Charter, 65-63. to 63. The, That was definitely the best game of, of the slate. It was the closest one. Clayton Valley Charter was definitely expected to be the, the winner in this game. And Whitney was able to come out on top by two, so give those boys the credit. Then we get the, the third game of the agenda, one that I got the chance to broadcast. It was Carmel versus Liberty Springs, and the Carmel team from Carmel, California, looking really good. They come out 93-48, to 48, and Levi, this team, um, is gonna is looking really unstoppable. Their post play w was tremendous. Then with the fourth game of the agenda, the other game I got to do was another local Sacramento area team, Folsom, playing Spanish Springs, who was one of the furthest traveling teams in this tournament, come all the way from Sparks, Nevada, about a six-hour drive, and they come out on top 59 to 55 beating Folsom who as we all know Folsom at Bulldogs they're a really well renowned program and you know they, they came out had a little bit of a rough game but Spanish Springs give them credit they held on in the fourth quarter with only scoring six points but were able to come out on top because they had such a big lead going into that quarter fifth game of the agenda Las Lomas beats another Sacramento area local team Franklin actually right there in Elk Grove 59 to 54 so we see a trend in this tournament the Elk Grove hosted tournament we see almost all of the local boys who came to play losing minus Whitney then we've got Vanden versus College Park, a couple of traveling teams. Game six of the agenda, 74-64 final for Vanden. Our final game of the agenda, St. Joseph's Notre Dame versus Clovis East, and that was 66-60. to So Levi, two tournaments that we had on the agenda, two college basketball games. 
but that's 16 basketball games we had on our schedule this week. Yeah, the opening day tip-off was obviously the most exciting one. There's a lot of close games. The other one, uh, if you're in a tournament, you know, obviously you're a great team. So all the teams did very well. The two junior college games as well, Columbia College, Folsom Lake, they all put up good numbers. Uh, great weekend overall for NorCal Sports. Oh, definitely. And we hope you guys had a chance to tune in to all of them. We've got some stuff coming up on our agenda. But first, we're going to take a quick break here on NorCal Sports Weekly Recap Show. Welcome back here to the NorCal Sports TV Weekly Recap Show. Dustin Padgett here for Levi Flora as well. Did you have time to catch your breath? Because we just went through a lot of games. Yeah, starting off with the Stag Tournament now, all yeah. the way in Stag, California. I know that sounds weird, but Stag Tournament starting off with Venture Academy and Bear Creek. Yes, Venture Academy versus Bear Creek. And then we have Sonora versus Buhawk Colony. Stag versus Rippin. The Stag is going to be the host team of this tournament. And Patterson versus Tracy. So a lot of these teams coming from that general area, but we also have a couple teams coming up from this area. So a little bit of travel here. Four games on the agenda. Should be a super exciting tournament that you're going to have the chance to attend. Yeah, I'll be there. you got to watch out for Venture Academy and Sonora High. They have a lot of great players. Venture Academy is going to come out strong in the beginning. They haven't lost a game yet. So hopefully they'll pull ahead and so will Sonora. Yes, we should be a super exciting tournament. We hope you guys tune in. We don't usually have a midweek tournament, so that's super exciting. We got four games, as I said, on the agenda. That will be tonight, folks. So if you have the chance to tune into this show in time, you can check out the those games tonight. And we have one more um, game on our agenda. It's a college game, Santa Rosa JC versus College of the Sequoias. Santa Rosa coming in as one of the top JUCO teams in the program, in the in the country. Yeah, you got to watch out for that team. They're going to be scoring offense, defensively. Every part of the game is going to be strong for them. Yeah, and if you're the College of the Sequoias, you're going to have your work cut out for you in that one. But, hey, they're coming in as the home team, so maybe they could use the home court advantage to their favor. Santa Rosa, JC, we saw them earlier this season in a, in a game where they came out on top by a few points. They're a good program, and they've always been a good program. So that should be a super exciting matchup to watch. And we hope you guys have had an enjoyable show. We hope you guys had an enjoyable holiday for Dustin Padgett and Levi Flores, this is NorCal Sports Weekly TV Recap Show, over and out.